Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. I got up a little later today, so it's gray and rainy instead of dark and rainy. But it's okay. So today, Kadu writes in asking about code quality in the different browser engines. And with my past in the WebKit project, what do I think about the code quality of WebKit, Gecko, and Blink? and also the ongoing in-progress servo project. So thank you for asking that question. It's a tricky question, but I'll try. So I guess the first thing I'll say is that I'm not super familiar with servo at all, so I don't really have an opinion, or at least not a well-formed one, so I'll just uh, skip that one. But uh, with the other three, I'm more familiar. So uh, I think I think I would I would put them on scales of uh, three things. So technology, taste, and soul. And I realized that uh, those are um, a bit arbitrary and strange scales, but let's just, uh, let's just try. So uh, starting with Gecko, I think Gecko is a very soulful project um, with people who really care about it. And they really care about uh, the web as a platform, they care about standardization, they care about uh, Mozilla, they care about open source software. You know, these people who really care. Uh, and there's a lot of soul coming out of that. And that's really cool. But I do think that they lag behind in the tech department a bit. Um, and probably part of that is that their budget is lower than the other engines. And also that, um, they come from a very old legacy code base. And I know that dragging around legacy code can really weigh you down. And I, I, I do know that they make efforts, considerable efforts, to stay more updated and to, uh, to refactor and things. But that takes time when you're dragging a lot of old stuff around. And just, <clears throat> just look at how long it took them to do um, multiple processes, for instance, and, and get that stable. Um, but they have it now, which is really great. Uh, and then when it comes to taste, I would just put them somewhere in the middle, because um, it's pretty tasteful, but it's maybe not as thought through as it could be all the time. Um, and I think that's something that happens a lot with when you have an open source project with people coming there out of their own free will to contribute things that they care about, then not everyone is going to be, uh, not everyone's going to have a great sense of taste. And sometimes you, you still want to take contributions from people, um, even though they're maybe not super aligned with um, the way you your project is taste wise. I, I don't know how to explain that really, but. That's that's the feeling I have. The Gecko code base is that it feels like a patchwork a little bit. <clears throat> and then um, when it comes to WebKit, I would say they're very high in taste. It's a very very tasteful code base, and you can really see the influence of the um, human interface department at Apple that has had very tight control over the Safari browsers. And a lot of that influence uh, goes into the um, code as well. Because um, with Apple products, it's pretty typical to not have like a million settings and all these tweakable things, but rather to have very beautiful and sane default settings. And then you can't really steer too far outside of that. And that really translates into the code base as well, where it's like everything isn't set up so it can run in a million different modes, but rather it follows along a predictable path most of the time. And it makes for very tasteful code and it makes it very um, easy to get into and, and read it and understand it. And I think that's really cool. <clears throat> but um, when it comes to the soul part, it's I mean, it's a corporate project, right? Primarily done by Apple engineers. So uh, there's a little bit less of that open source spirit, that's for sure. And 
Um, a little bit less of that people who do it just because they care so much. But the people who do do it, I know a lot of them personally, and I do know that they care a whole lot. So um, I, I'm, I can confidently say that there is a lot of soul in the project, but um, there's not that, like, I'm here just because I want to be here uh, spirit, which uh, Gecko definitely has. And um, then when it comes to Blink, I think they're very high on the tech thing. Um, I, I would say, by the way, about WebKit, that they're, they're like medium high on the tech thing, but it's not as exploratory as uh, Blink is. Um, so Blink is very high on tech, and they're very willing to iterate and, and just break shit and go fast. Uh, what's that expression? Move fast and break things? That's, they're very much like that, and uh, they just throw like a thousand, two thousand engineers at it and, and just see what sticks. Um, at least that's how they, they did things in the past, and you can get a lot of cool stuff coming out of that strategy, but it's also, you build a lot of stupid things that you have to constantly like prune and refine, and it's, they don't seem to think things through very much, they just go. Um, but yeah, a lot of cool stuff comes out of that, so I, props um, to Blink for the um, technology. But I think they are very low on soul and extremely low on taste. Um, Blink is probably the least tasteful code base that I can think of um, at that level. Uh, it's very, very corporate and dead inside and uh, their marketing material and graphic design is also uh, like that, I would say. Very dead inside. And I don't know why that is. Probably because it's... I don't know. I don't know. I can't speculate. But um, the code base, I always... So back when, uh, back when Google and Apple were both in WebKit together, I remember that there was this constant feeling with um, the engineers working on Chromium um, that they they were not judicious in their programming about like um, like over engineering and uh, just using all these design patterns for the sake of using design patterns and I, I remember some things in particular where. There was this perfectly reasonable uh, couple hundred, hundred line switch statement um, that did some, um, what was it? It was uh, taking CSS properties and turning them into uh, something more suitable for the, um, for the layout engine. And there's this big switch statement that just looked at the property type and then um, turned it into layout data. and. Um, some people from Google, they decided that this thing needs to be broken up into a, a hundred different virtual classes and then you would put instantiate one of each of these things, have a, one virtual function in them, and then you make a lookup table so you can get the right class for your um, CSS property and then you would just call a virtual function on it instead. So this switch statement, which was so readable and understandable, uh, was turned into like a hundred or maybe more, but like a hundred classes, and and they were so happy with themselves when they were doing this, and it was freaking weird. <laughs> and I remember it was it was just this thing at the time that that we were so annoyed by it, and we couldn't get them to stop. I don't know. And they it seemed like they cared more about doing that than than we cared about stopping them, so it happened. But after they uh, forked and left the project, then we went and changed it again. Anyway, um, just I guess just things like that, like not tasteful. And then um, just with the soul thing, um, I think it's probably hard to muster up a lot of soul if you're working for um, uh, what's essentially an advertising company, right? And on some, some level, you know that you are um, 
your purpose is to get more ads in front of people. That's in the end what makes the money for your company. And I, I imagine that weighs on you as, as an engineer because um, engineers tend to not like these things. They tend to run ad blockers and things like that. And to be part of the, the, the force that pushes against all of that, uh, I imagine that it must be a bit soul killing. Um, but I don't know. I'm sure there are people inside um, Google who really care about Blink, who really care about the web. I mean, of course there are. They are very active in the standardization groups and everything. So I don't mean to take away from that. I just, um, it's important to see things for what they really are, you know? I think, I think I'm being a little bit too harsh on Blink, honestly, but it's, uh, it's my personal bias. They're not, they're not bad, and, and it is impressive, a lot of the tech that they build, and they really, they really give, gave the browser community a huge kick in the butt back in 2008 when they put out uh, the multiprocess Chrome with the V8 engine, which was really fast. And they started a new browser war, which, you know, we've all benefited from in some ways and, and also has ruined the web in other ways. Um, but, eh, it is what it is. That's the landscape, right? And I, I try to use all the different browsers regularly myself just to keep having a feel for them. Uh, it makes me very sad to see things like um, Microsoft adopting Chromium as the foundation for their Edge browser because uh, browser diversity or engine diversity is a very good thing and uh, it's just sad that they give up like that. But I guess it's a, it's a very typical, or it's a great example if, uh, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. Um, and you see them doing the same with uh, this Linux subsystem that they put in Windows these days. So who am I to question Microsoft's strategy? I feel like I said that not too long ago, but maybe, maybe I question their strategy sometimes. Anyways, these are, these are the ways that I feel about the different engines and their code qualities. Um, I hope that, hope that answers your question. And, Thank you for asking the question, and I will see you next time. Bye.